Today I'm going to do an introduction to modeling and I'm going to do a, a fastener. Uh, it's pretty basic but it'll give you an idea of, um, of what to expect when you start to model in Pro E Wildfire. Well 4.0 is what I'm using. So I'm going to create a new part and I'm going to call it fastener. All right, so I have three planes, and I'm going to re hit the revolve command, which is this command right here. And I'm going to, it's going to ask me for a placement. That's what the red is uh, over this uh, text right here. So I select that, then define. Now I select the plane that I want to sketch on. So I'm going to pick my front plane and hit sketch. So the first thing I need is an axis of revolution so this tool right here gives me my axis that's what I'm going to revolve around and now I'm going to draw uh, the shape of my fastener I'm not going to do threads alright now you'll see that ProE by default <clears throat> excuse me by default will automatically put unconstrained dimensions on your part. This means you can click and drag any of these and they're not locked down. There's no these dimensions aren't really they're just free dimensions that Pro automatically puts on the part. So you can change that by left clicking on it then right click and holding and you can make it strong or you can lock it. Now if you make it strong now you'll see it's 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 a different color than the basic Pro E dimension. It doesn't mean that you can't move it though. You can still move it and it will change. If you wanted this dimension to be locked, let's just say I wanted it at 170, and I don't want it to move, if I left click on it to highlight it and then hold right click and hit lock, it now turns orange. And what that means is that no matter what I do, it will not move now. It's locked to that position. So you can lock your dimensions if you have specific dimensions that you do not want to move. So I've put my first dimension on there and I've locked it. Um, you can still change it. So I'm going to change it to 50. And uh, I don't want my angular dimension to show up like this. Uh, so what I will do is I will add my own angular dimension and you will notice that that dimension that PTC gave it it automatically went away so I will make this 30 and I'm actually gonna change this dimension here because that's incorrect I'm gonna give my part an overall length now you'll see pro is trying to tell you okay well I still need another dimension for this length for for one of these two so I'm gonna add in a dimension and you'll see that that dimension is gone now. So I'm going to make this one, make this 50, and I'm going to change my diameter. Now, here's the thing about diameters. This is a radius right here, a radius dimension put in by ProE. If I grab the dimension tool and I select the diameter, select the center line, and then select the diameter again in middle click, it will give me a diameter dimension. Okay, and I can change that to uh, something more reasonable, like say six millimeters. I'm gonna make this 20. Okay, so now you can see that all the light gray dimensions that um, Pro E automatically you know puts in when you start making your uh, shape, they're all gone. My design is fully constrained. Now, like I said, these can still be moved. Uh, what you can do is if you go down to this pull down, hit dimension it will only select dimensions and I highlight them all right click and go to lock now they're all locked now I can't move my design at all okay that's how I want it so I'm gonna finish by checking this and hitting OK now I'm gonna create my hex so back up here the placement is red so I know it needs me to make a selection I'm going to select my front plane and hit sketch. I'm going to draw a circle. 
Now in this instance, I'll show you how there is a way. ProE does have custom hexes already drawn where you don't you can just drop them in, but I'm going to show you how I create a hex. Now you'll see it puts all these dimensions on here, and I don't need any of these dimensions. So I'm going to use geometric constraints, this little icon right here. And I'm going to make this tangent to my circle. And you'll notice that as I do that, a lot of those standard pro -E dimensions started going away. Now I want my corners, I want these angles to be 60. Okay, so I select these two edges. I'm in the middle here, and I middle click, and it will give me my angle. I put in 60. Now this dimension is wrong. I don't need a dimension here, so I'm going to make this equal to this. And you'll see that that goes away. Now, the one thing I need for a hex is I need my across flats, not the diameter. So I select these two edges for my across flats, middle click to finish, and it gives me my uh, across flats dimension. And because all of my lines are tangent to the circle, the circle will automatically follow it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to, let's say, 7. Yeah, seven's fine. And I have now this is a construction circle. I need to make it a construction circle. Okay, so I'm gonna left click on it, then hold and right click and go down to construction. Otherwise it won't extrude. I'm gonna check mark out of that. And it's asking me for a direction. I'm gonna change the direction by clicking this arrow. I'm gonna make the height um, four. and I have the beginning of my hex so I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger I'm gonna make it 8 all I have to do is change one dimension if you're wondering how I did that if you double click on the feature left click double click on the feature it will bring up your dimensions and the only two dimensions I need to change are I have my width or my thickness and I have my across flats so all I did was click the across flats and it changed the hex for me so I'm going to do one more revolve, a revolve cut, uh, to put a chamfer on this. So I'm going to go to placement, define, select my front plane, hit sketch. So it's giving me one uh, area I can use here uh, as a reference, but I need these two faces as a reference as well. So if you go to sketch, references you will see this little dialog box come up and you can add more references so I'm gonna add these edges by simply just clicking them and you can see that I can now use these edges as opposed to this one where it doesn't highlight so I'm gonna grab my line tool and I'm gonna make my shapes that I want to revolve. Now again I need to add an axis of revolution and I need to constrain these. Now you'll see they've got they always add in these light gray uh, auto dimensions. You do not need those. They will go away if you constrain it correctly. So I'm going to make this 15. Make this 15. And the only dimension left is a diameter, so I'm going to put my diameter dimensions on here. I'm going to make this 8. And you will see that all the little gray dimensions are gone now. I just have the two dimensions I'm using to constrain this. I'm going to hit check to get out of here, and when I get down to this point right here, I don't want to add material, I want to subtract it. So there's a remove material. I select that, hit OK, and I'm done. And if you wanted, you could add a blend in there. But that, this kind of walks you through um, what happens when you start creating lines in Sketcher and you start seeing uh, the, the light gray dimensions and getting confused because you want to add them, add dimensions that make it look how you want it to look so you have to manually add those for those light gray dimensions to go away 
I hope this tutorial was useful. Uh, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment and rate. Thanks. Bye.